Well, good morning from the hash knife. Um, we've talked about these two studs earlier and kind of went over their conformations and their mental acuities, things like that. But today is a very special day for one of them. I've put a blue halter on him because he thinks he's won first place. In reality, this guy won first place. So uh, he gets to stay a stallion and he'll be breeding our mares in our breeding program. And this guy gets to get gelded and then get trained and go to a hopefully a really good home as a trained gelding. And uh, it's one of those things that you hate to see happen, but you know what? It's necessary because you want the right horse for your breeding program. And although he seems ornery, that's more in defense because that guy is a little bit more ornery to him. He will not bite, will you? No. So this is Bentley. Bentley will be with us for a long time, breeding some of our mares. And he's eligible to every mare on the place, so that'll be really good. And this guy... We'll give him a little bit of time. Somebody might want to buy him sight unseen or with any training at all, and that's just fine too. So stick with us. The vet's going to be here in a little bit, and he gets to collect on first place. Earlier, but he, got, he got this blue halter because he won first place today. <laughs> what do you think, Jimmy? Is he 950, 1,000? He's two. Right in there? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like, say nine anyway. Yeah, it's kind of right guessing. He's a little more dense on that hind end, muscle-wise, than in his guest. He says, you're one of them needle-loving buggers. It's the new millennium. Everybody's supposed to be on drugs now. <laughs> I said, you know, I don't care if people have them. And I don't. I said, but I have never seen a tattoo that made anybody look, look better. better. Yeah. Well, I like my tattoos. I said, I am ecstatic that you like your tattoos. <laughs> Go back before he goes down. Yes. And I will stand, if you've got, just don't let his head hit. Yep. And I'll stand on this side after I get this in him so that he falls away can, from me. Yes. Theoretically. He'll either fall away from me or on one of you. It's a 50 50 deal. Well, do you want me to pull him off or you out? Yes, sir. <laughs> and you the same. You hope. <laughs> now talk about what you put in it first. The first drug was xylazine, or rompum. Rompum. Um, it's a tranquilizer. And this drug is ketamine, which is an anesthetic. Probably made famous as a date rate drug. Yep. Special K, I think they called it. Probably. Not stud prospect. Very, very, very few are. Yeah. No, you've got to be damn particular about it. And a lot. If he goes this way, we can roll. <sighs> Boy, you got sunshine to work. Oh, yeah. Oh. You got a towel to put over his eyes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, shit, John. Right. <laughs> Way to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The thing about these drugs when you use them is you should keep your voice really low and quiet because you can excite them if you're too loud. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was one of my former lives was a tranquilized uh, large game or bears or mountain lions using the same basic drugs in different mixes, different amounts. And if you're too loud, you can really jack them up. They just, they get a response and then, then you've got a problem on your hands. So that's why the towel's over the eye, well, the a little bit to help coming. out. You hold? No. You're gonna do, okay. That way if he starts objecting, he's fighting with himself. himself. Your wife's not here, huh? She's not. <laughs> no. She's just, at this point, she's just hopeful for the insurance money. <laughs> yeah, your grandkids, not mine. <laughs> Boy, it ain't often you don't have to work in the dark. You're shed either. off pretty good, fella. Yeah, he's... 
and he's too I waited to just to prove these guys which one he wanted you had a couple had two so are you looking for a stallion for yourself yeah yeah we sold it the one we had uh, last year and then uh, it was time to make sure we didn't have any bottleneck genetics you know, there's a few there's a few replacement mares that we couldn't breed to. And you know, get some outside bloodline in, some good stuff. Now when you cut these testicles out, make sure they go that way, because we need them to have pilgrims ride these guys when we sell them. So you don't want the speed. I don't want the speed, don't throw them okay. that way. They don't need speed. You'd be surprised, and I don't know how how much you believe that, but some people do. Some hundred and twenty percent. Absolutely. Well, yeah, every me. racehorse in the world that's ever gilded goes that direction. <laughs> me, as long as they're out of the horse after that, I don't care. Well, I don't necessarily believe in it, but you know what? There's a lot of things I don't know, and if it's a chance that it could happen, hey, I'm all for it. You bet. You bet. <laughs> Is she snoring, Rosie? Yeah, he's out. Yeah. He is out. He may reflexly pull a testicle back here in a minute. You want me to get closer? Oh, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad you've visited with Ron. Because I haven't. Yeah, we had, it's been a couple months, you know, I've been up here calving and I've only been to town, I don't know, three, four times, well, four or five times maybe in the last couple of months and it's been joyous. All right, now we're just using a masculator to just crush that. There we go. There's that in the back. That's good. And don't send one out front either. They both got to go to the back. So. They'll both go to the back. You don't want him at half speed. You don't want him at half speed or I don't want him turning in circles. Well, there's two my... dogs, so each dog has to oh, have yeah. one. So we'll... <laughs> now you're just crush, you're just crushing the artery here, and and, uh... and theoretically letting it clot just a little. Okay. Yeah, we used to do this the tough way, where we would put them down and uh, hold them down, and then we would go ahead and and do just like this, wash them up. And one guy was designated to go ahead and pull that testicle out and pull it out, cut the muscle, the cremaster muscle, and so that wouldn't he wouldn't suck it back up. And then at that point, uh, we would go ahead and put a clamp on it with a couple of staves from a oak barrel, and then with a hot iron cauterize it in half and but we never used anesthetic and you know that's kind of a tough way to go then you had to convince the horse you were his buddy well that's exactly right and i think he would take that out on anybody it didn't matter on who it was here you go bud there we go wow another one that direction that's good your oversized friend went after that one too yeah they you might be careful if he lives in the house with you. Tonight. <laughs> this incision out so it heals more slowly, so it drains, drains. well. And we're done. And this is it. That's your old clamp. That's the old clamp, the old oak staves. Yeah. And then we'd clamp that, put those testicles in there, and then put a ring on the end, on this end of it, hold it tight, and then cauterize it up too. And you can see some old burn marks yep. on that. Yep. That was the way we did her. It's not real long on this side. Oof, that's a big one. I've seen them, but they're, yeah, they're not very deep. So we'll pop these wolf teeth out. The amazing thing about wolf teeth is the more that sticks out, the usually deep, the, shallower? the less root they have. Ah. You want to keep that for his baby book? Yeah, we'll do that with we'll a lock of hair. Oops, there it is. There it is, right there. It wasn't too bad of a fight. Huh. He 
he's the abnormal one. You got one and nothing. You only had one. I'll be darned. See, there's nothing. Oh there. yeah, that's just it's his molar, isn't it? Yep. yep. Can you get a shot of that? <laughs> Pull that out. See that molar? There should be a little tooth. That little tooth that should be right in tooth. front of that, like that, in front of that. And you can tooth. see on this one where the you know, the it was right there. Huh. And occasionally they have them on the bottom. And I have seen them. I have seen them have one. And I've seen them have four. <laughs> well, no, we've never had that. Never had four. It's rare. Yeah. They don't usually have them on the bottoms, but occasionally. Yeah. I'll be darned. Well, your daffodils are pretty pink tulips. Yeah, that's nothing to my doing. That's. I thought you probably were off here. Yeah. Off the house a little. And yeah. And he'll just sleep this off a little bit. Very peaceful. Till he wakes up. A little stiff for a day or two. Yeah. They got great weather. It's important to keep them. Really important to keep them so that they're not wet. They don't get. You don't do this while it's raining or right after it's going to rain because you get all kinds of rainwater coming down off of their sides and come down on that incision and you can get them they can get wet and then cause a lot of Ooh. infection that way so you want to have them dry for at least 24 hours if you can longer is better but that's a risk you take here in the springtime with you know hopefully you're getting a lot of weather but you got to take what you can get when you can get it and get this done a little bit and they typically put one front foot out and then they put the other front foot out and then they just get up. Um, some of them get a lot more frantic than that, but most of them don't. Okay. And the cover over his eyes helping keep him down right now. I'm feeling a little light, but not headed. Yeah, light on the right in. He did brain surgery, fella. Yeah. <laughs> His scrotum's a little swelled up. He's got a clot starting on one side, which is fine. As he walks and moves some, he may get a drop. clot come out. Yeah. But yeah. I'll, uh, I'm going to put in got a small spot back here. When we're done, I'll just walk him back there. He and this other young stud have been together since they were foals. And so I'll probably keep them together a little bit just for the exercise because they're not, they're not running it. He's more likely to run the other one. That may not happen quite so much today. I don't think it will. They're all a work in progress. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A little balance a little bit better. Yeah. I didn't do that. <laughs> tying the right rear leg forward like that, sometimes they'll buckle over a tan to for an hour, but he hasn't. Hmm. Yeah, he, he was buckling his other one first. Which not uncommon you're coming out of the drug you just relaxed, right? Yep. 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 I think he's going to be kind of a tall guy. Yeah. Well, I would, for a two-year-old, I would say he will. Yep. All right, we're going to put him in a short little pasture here. Come on, kiddo. Well, we can kind of keep an eye on him. Come on. over here at the water trough because he's going to get thirsty.
get his pasture mate, bring him over here. And what that'll do is allow him to have a little bit of exercise because he won't move much on his own and he needs to exercise. So bringing his pasture mate in here will keep him moving as long as it's not too much movement and then don't get too aggressive with each other. And he shouldn't because uh, he's, he's the more dominant one of the two. So the other one's not going to push him around too much, but hopefully enough just to give him some exercise. That's Bentley. Yeah, they're talking already. Good boy. Let's see what happened to him. Yeah, go talk about it. They've been separated for an hour. And it's like they don't know each other. This is good if you can keep him moving a little bit, keep him exercised. But they got some green grass here and another pasture. So it's always sweeter where you <laughs> haven't been. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll leave him here and we'll just kind of watch him for a, a day or two. Make sure he's not uh, going to continue to bleed or anything. And then we'll be able to turn him back out in the pasture. And then I can put him in the larger group of horses out in the big pasture and then uh, let him heal up, let him grow a little bit. We'll do some work with him in the fall and the uh, winter. Well, it's been about 24 hours with uh, his new status as a gelding. Hell, he's not really super thrilled about it. But we need to kind of monitor him a little bit, take a look at the incisions. And I don't know if you can see this too well, but you can see incisions are got a little bit of drainage. There's not a lot of swelling there at all. So this is really, really good, really promising. And uh, you can see when he walks, he's really not stoved up, not stiff. He's There's a tiny bit of stiffness there, but that's to be expected. But doing really, really well overall. So... We will continue to monitor him, watch him, and then we'll let him uh, go out and be a little bit more free here in another pasture. After, well, we'll give him a couple days. <laughs>